Hello guys, in this guide, I'm going to walk you through step-by-step -step process of setting up a Jenkins dynamic slave using Docker. So what is a dynamic slave? Dynamic slave is nothing but a concept of creating Jenkins slave agents for a particular build during the runtime rather than having it running all the time. So in this video, I'll show you uh, how to set up a Docker remote API on a Docker host, install and configure a Docker plugin on Jenkins and create Docker agent cloud that will be used as an identifier in our Jenkins jobs. And finally, validate the setup using a test job which triggers a dynamic Docker slave that successfully executes a test script. Now let's have a look at the key benefits of using Docker as a build slave. There are three key benefits for using Docker as a slave. The first one is the slaves will be ephemeral in nature. When I say ephemeral in nature, uh, a slave will be created only when you trigger a job. The second benefit that you get is isolated execution environments. For example, you can create different Docker images of different application versions or different runtime versions and you can use that in your jobs. The third benefit that you get is better resource utilization. Instead of running uh, several VMs continuously for your build and deployment workload, you can efficiently manage these with uh, separate Docker images that basically comes up when you trigger a build. Now let's go through some of the high level aspects of this uh, setup. Uh, the first one is we need a Docker host with a remote API enabled. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to enable this remote API on 4243 port and also uh, from Jenkins master uh, to this particular Docker host, this port should be reachable. So like I said, 4243 should be reachable from your Jenkins master and the Docker generic uh, host ports that is 32,768 to 60,999. So this, these are dynamic ports that will be used when these containers come up. So your uh, Jenkins master should be able to communicate uh, to any of these ports in this particular range and it is very important. If you are in a corporate network and you use corporate firewall rules, make sure that these ports are open between your uh, Jenkins master node and your Docker host where we are going to deploy the Docker containers. Uh, the second uh, important thing is Jenkins slave Docker image. So there are two type of images that we can use for this particular setup. The first one is SSH type, uh, which basically uh, does SSH connection from master to the slave container. And the second one is a Java JNLP type. Uh, this type of connection happens from a container uh, to the Jenkins master. So this is, this is similar to the Jenkins agents, SSH and JNLP agents that we use with a normal virtual machine or a, a server. Right. And third, you need to have Jenkins Docker plugin installed. This plugin actually takes care of, uh, you know, maintaining or creating or deleting those containers uh, on the Docker host. And don't worry about all these configurations. I'll, I'll walk you guys through the step by step process involved. There are two main prerequisites for this guide. First one is a working Jenkins master setup, preferably the latest version, a dedicated server with latest Docker installed. And here is a very important configuration. This server should allow traffic from Jenkins master on port 4243 and 32768 to 60999. This is not just two ports, it's a range of ports. The big port range will be used by Docker to randomly assign a host port for the Jenkins to connect to the newly created container. Normally, on a secured enterprise network, you will not be having access to create these firewall rules. Please talk to your network administrator and get this firewall coded and added to the server. To make things easier, I have added all the commands and document references in the description below. Please check it out and keep it as a reference while you follow the video tutorial. Let's get started with the setup. Uh, I, what I have here is a, a dedicated Docker host where I have installed uh, Docker already. I will just run docker ps command and it shows that docker is up and running. So here all we have to do is just open with sudo privileges open this file slash lib system d system docker dot service and search for xx start. So if you see here uh, it clearly shows the xx start parameter just command out this line by enabling insert and just add a new line with a new exit, exit start parameter 
uh, which basically exposes the uh, Docker API on port 4243. So if you see this new XX start uh, says that uh, it should be the, the API connection should be enabled on all interfaces of this particular host on port 4243 as well as the Unix socket, the default Unix socket. Now let's save this configuration. So the first thing is we need to reload uh, the Docker daemon. Now let's, rest let's restart the Docker service. Now let's see uh, if Docker service is running as expected. So the service Docker status. Here the service is up and running without any issues. Let's run a docker ps command and see if it is like working as expected. Yes, it is working as expected. Now, let's see if the docker api is working fine or not. You can check that with the simple curl command. So here I'm using the curl command uh, to query the local host on port 4243. We are just querying the version of the docker through API. Yeah, it is giving output uh, with all the Docker information. So this means your API is enabled uh, on this particular host. Now let's test the API with the private or public IP. So in my case, I'm going to use the public IP of this machine because I'm, I'm, I'm using a test environment. So the 54.189, it is my public IP. Even that is returning uh, the API response. So which means this particular host is now enabled with Docker Remote API. It's ready to be configured with Jenkins now. Now that we have a Docker host with Remote API enabled, we will start the Jenkins configurations. Here I have the latest version of Jenkins 2.235. You might see a little difference in the UI components if you are using a little lesser version. However, all the generic configurations remain the same. Now head over to Manage Jenkins manage plugins then click the available tab search for docker so the plugin that we are going to install is the docker plugin and specifically under cloud providers select the docker plugin and click install without restart now once it is installed select the restart jenkins when the installation complete option this will restart the Jenkins. It is going to take two minutes. Now we are back to Jenkins home. All the Jenkins dynamic slaves falls under cloud category, whether it is Docker based, Kubernetes or an EC2 instance based. Now what we want to do is add a Docker cloud, meaning we need to tell Jenkins about our Docker host so that it can deploy the containers during the build. In Jenkins versions greater than 2.200, there are some UI and configuration changes. Uh, go to manage Jenkins. In versions 2.200 or lesser, you will find the Docker Cloud configurations under the Jenkins configure system option here. But in the latest Jenkins version like this one I have now, has a dedicated nodes and cloud options like this, where you can configure the Docker Cloud. Let's go ahead and configure it. So click manage nodes and clouds. Uh, click on configure clouds. Click on add a new cloud. So automatically the Docker option will pop up here. So this is appearing here because we have the Docker plugin installed and click Docker. And now click Docker cloud details. So here this Docker host URI is very important. Here you need to uh, provide the Docker host that we configure the remote API. So in my case, right. It is this particular IP. So make sure you add this TCP at the start. TCP colon slash slash your Docker host IP colon 4243 where we expose this Docker remote API. So here if you see there are options like server credentials. Leave as it is because we did not configure any server credentials for our Docker host. Now go ahead and click the test connection. Here it shows the version and API of the Docker host, which, which means uh, it is now successfully connected to the Docker host. Now enable this checkbox and then click Docker agent templates and add Docker template. 
a docker agent template is like a dedicated slave configuration for example for java application builds you can have a docker agent template and for node.js application you can have a different template this template is nothing but the information about a docker image that we are going to use as a slave and the container properties that will be used during the container launch by the build job let's go ahead and fill up these details so the first one is labels here we mention a unique name for this particular agent template so i'm just going to fill up saying that demo docker slave i'm going to mark it as enabled and i'm going to give the name similar to the label and here for the docker image i'm going to provide the custom image i have built for jenkins docker slave with ssh you can find the github repository details in the description you can use it as a reference to build your own ssh based slave image so here is the image name that i have created let's say you are in a corporate network and you do not have access to a public docker hub then probably you need to provide the registry details of your own repository which is available inside the organization and the next setting is remote file system here you should provide slash home slash jenkins because this is the folder structure that i have provided inside the docker file of this particular image and in connect method choose connect with ssh and under ssh key select use configured ssh credentials so for this particular image the default username and password is jenkins and jenkins so go ahead and add a new credential jenkins username is jenkins and password is jenkins id docker ssh and click add and select the docker ssh credentials from the drop down and select the non verifying verification strategy and we are all set here now so there are a lot of other configurations that you will see here uh, you can play around with this configuration and see what fits your project needs but i just showed you the basic configuration required to get one basic setup up and running now that's pretty much it now just save this configurations our next step is to validate the jenkins uh, setup docker slave setup with the jenkins job so let's go ahead and create a freestyle job create a new item i'm just going to name it as demo demo job select freestyle project click okay and in the label expression we should provide the label we have used in the jenkins agent template for example we have provided demo docker slave so i'll use the same name here so automatically it will pop up here i'm just selecting that then just go down select execute shell I'm going to run a very basic echo command. Focus slave. I'll save this and let's build this project. You can see it goes into pending state and it exactly shows the container name here. Now it started executing. I'll just click yeah if you see here it remotely deployed a container on that host and it ran our shell script inside the particular host so which means our setup is working here what we have seen is a ssh method there is one more method called jnlp uh, you can use a jnlp based slave image to do a similar setup so let, let's see how to do that so first let's head over to the configure clouds option again what we have here is a agent template based on ssh let's add one more template and docker template and here i will call this as docker jn 
let be slave click enable and the name i'll give the same name as the label and docker image let's go to hub.docker.com hub.docker.com and search for jenkins jnlp image so the, this is the image we need select the image name add it here and this add it as later so when we are using it for a project make sure you go through the docker file and create one for your own needs so i'm just for test purposes i'm using the latest image do not do this in your production environment right jnlp slave connect method select connect the jnlp so here you have to provide the jenkins url i'm going to provide the url here what i have this is the url i'm going to leave every other setting as it is i'm just gonna save it so for normally a jnlp slave to connect to jenkins master you need to enable jnlp slave on the master side you can do that by enabling it in the global uh, security configuration so click configure global security and under agents select this fixed and you can provide port 50000 and make sure in your firewall rules from your docker host to jenkins this particular 50000 port should be open otherwise the setup won't work now go ahead and save this okay now let's create one more job to test this jnlp setup docker jnlp demo freestyle project okay jnlp slave this is the label that we have given there um, select a build slip execute shell jnlp slave And click build now so here it goes in a pending state now now if you see even the jnlp setup has worked so it has deployed a jnlp uh, container and the container connected back to jenkins and it kind of ran the shell script that we have given in the job so this is pretty much it so we have seen both ssh and jnlp based setup this is a very basic setup that i have done you can add more parameters and configuration to this setup when you actually work on a project environment i just wanted to get you guys started with the basic setup so that you can you know continue from there and one more key thing is that please do not use docker images directly from the docker hub that we used here for a test environment make sure you go through the docker fails bake images on your own when we use an actual project environment that is the recommended practice also it will avoid you from trouble of having um, you know security vulnerabilities in this public images that you see in docker hub thank you for watching this guide and if you have any doubts or need any clarifications please drop a comment below if you like this guide and would like to receive future updates on new tutorials please subscribe to this channel thank you